Good evening, liars. How are you doing this evening, liars? And I can call you a liar tonight with absolute perfect confidence because the old King James because the old King James Holy Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 4 yea let God be true whatever man a liar whatever man a liar and also the old King James Bible says in the book of Revelation that without the city that is outside the city for all of those that love it and make it alive. That love it and make it alive. And there is no time of the year. There's just absolutely no time of the year when lies are more prevalent than at Christ Mass. Christ Mass. At Christ Mass, the whole thing is alive from start to finish. Lie number one, it's not about Jesus Christ. Jesus is not the reason for the season. Pagans are the reason for the season. Pagans are. Pagans are the reason for the season. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's an abomination to Jesus Christ, as a matter of fact. And I'm not alone in that factual statement. That's what that is. It's a factual statement. The founders of this nation, those people, those brave and those honorable people and those hardworking people and those thrifty people and those good people and those God-fearing people that came over on the Mayflower, the Pilgrims and the Puritans, they believe the same thing about Christmas that I do. Amen. Did you know that the founders of this nation didn't celebrate Christmas? Because they recognized that not only it was blasphemous to the Lord Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, but that it also came up through the, the world's most satanic, utterly satanic counterfeit of Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church. Not only that, it's worse than that. It even gets worse than that. Can you get worse than the Roman Catholic Church? Well, just a tad bit, I guess. It came from ancient Roman paganism. That's right, that's where Christmas comes from. That's where all the customs associated with Christmas come from. It comes from ancient Roman paganism. The time of the year, the time of the year, the tree, the exchanging of presents, the drinking, the revelry, all that came from Saturnalia and Sol Invictus. And if you want some facts, get a hold of Alexander Hislop's The Two Babylons and, and read it for a change. If you can read. If you can read. And you will get a whole book full of facts. Well documented facts. From layered. All the ancient authorities. That's right. You'll get them from Nineveh and from Babylon, from Assyria, from Rome, Greece, from Egypt. You'll get that. Now, Puritans, the Puritans and the Pilgrims, they had good sense enough to read their Holy Bible. In their case, it was the Geneva Bible. But it's the same Bible, essentially, from the same manuscripts as the old King James Bible. The old King James Bible. That's what separates the wheat from the chain. That's right. The Word of God. That's what separates true Christianity from the vast, vast, putrefying mass of false Christianity. False Christianity. That's right, Jesus wants the truth proclaimed, woman. He always wants the truth proclaimed. That's because Jesus Christ is the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come up unto the Father but by Him. And the Bible says concerning Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. The Bible says concerning the true God that there is no lie in Him. No lie in Him. God is not a liar. God is not a man that He should lie. You see, man, mankind are liars. Mankind are liars. You can't trust man. Men are liars. Next time you guys are out but the Word of God, the King James Bible, and the Lord Jesus Christ thereof, 
That's right. Amen. You know, religion, religion will damn you to hell just as quick as being an atheist. Religion damns what Jesus Christ says. What religion always does, Roman Catholic religion first and foremost, but the Protestants aren't far behind them. And most of these apostate uh, conservatives and fundamentalists and all the rest of them hound dog to the devil, they ain't far behind them either. What religion will do is religion will have a little bit of Jesus, they'll have a little bit of Bible, and then they'll mix in the poison of the traditions of men and, and in order to justify their religion and make money and, and earn a living without having to go out and work for a living and so on and so forth. You know the operation. Get a tax exempt status, live high on the hog, keep people uh, on the hook, and damn them to hell. That's what religion does. But Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's right. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You know what is, has occurred for me, and I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for this, since I recognize the truth about Christ's Mass, and since I stopped playing that stupid game of going out and buying presents so that I could give them to some ungrateful fellow Americans so they could throw them in the garbage can a few years later. You know what that has done for me? That has liberated me. You know what Jesus Christ and the Bible has done for me? It has liberated me from being enslaved by your stupid customs. And you people's customs, you modern day hell-bound Americans, you got some stupid customs. If you don't call going down to the mall on Black Friday and fighting all the rest of the savages so you can get a, a good deal on something stupid, then you don't know what stupid is. That's just stupid. Mm -hmm. And I say that with the utmost love and charity. Toward yes. Because it's the truth. But that's what Jesus Christ and the Word of God does. It liberates the sinner from sin. It liberates the sinner from being enslaved by the customs of the people. By the traditions of men. You are slaves, not us. That's right. We're not slaves. You people are the slaves. You're slaves to your passions. You're slaves to your flesh. You're slaves to your culture and your society. You're slaves to your government. You're slaves to Satan's world system. And we're calling you out of this pig pen. We're saying, come out of the hog slop, little hoggies, little pigs. Come out of the hog slop. Come out of the cesspool of sin. Come into the Lord Jesus, but you still got a chance. This is the worst stand-up I've ever heard. This is just... Come out of the pig pen. If this is a bit, wipe the hog slap off. Man. Get a King James Bible. If you're trying to do comedy, you're... Now there's a verse in the old King James Holy Bible in the book of Psalms, 119, 
first nine, I believe it is. And this is a good first for you young men and you young women down here in Hellboard tonight. It's a give and take. If you get a heckler, you had to put him no in place. No King James, Holy Bible says, who with all shall a young man, there's a young man right there. Hey, young man. Shall a young man cleanse his way. Who with all shall a young man cleanse his way. Young man what? And the answer to that question is by taking heed thereto according to thy word. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You know the word of God doesn't do you any good unless you take heed to it. You must take heed to it. Come out of the old wicked sun worship. That old wicked paganism. So what happens if I make this? Like, I just want to hear you. I know. I'm Come out of that covetousness, which is idolatry, according to the Holy Bible. And the boss is this. That's a good Christmas verse. Why don't the Baptist preachers preach on that verse? Do you know what Santa Claus is all about? Do you know what Christmas is all about? It's not about Jesus Christ. It's about covetousness, as well as the tradition of men and the customs of the people. Covetousness. Do you know what overcomes you? Do you know what overcomes your soul? When Christmas morning comes on the scene or Christmas Eve comes on the scene and you see all those presents underneath that bell tree, that tomato's tree, you know what happens? We don't, you know what comes over your soul when you see all that garbage? Covetousness. You start having covetousness to overcome your spirit. You covet whatever is behind that wrapping. That's right. You covet whatever mommy or daddy got you. Santa Claus didn't get it. That's a lie. If this has from Santa on it, somebody's lying to you. Mommy and daddy's a liar. Oklahoma's a liar. There's a tree. No, dude, I believe in you. I promise. I believe in you. It's Jesus Christ. That's the standard. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Isn't it odd? Isn't it strange? I don't want to put it through my pants. Doesn't it stand out? That the King James Holy Bible is called covetousness, idolatry, idolatry, and covetousness is at the very heart of a Christ man. Covetousness. Covetousness. Did you know that Jesus Christ said in the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 15, what? Take heed and beware of covetousness. That's why it's not right. my pants. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. You know what the devil is soaring you up to do? You know what the devil is prompting you to do? This bail mass, this Tammuz mass, this Christ mass? He's prompting you to think that the more presents you get, the better off you're going to be. That's right. The better your life is going to be. The more presents you get under that tree, the better your life is going to be. But Jesus said, a man's life consisteth not, not, in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Good scripture. Good scripture. That's a real good scripture for Christ's Mass and Baal yes. Mass and Tammuz Mass and Adonis Mass or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you savages have got a hook in your nose. This time of year, from the time Thanksgiving ends up until December 25th, the devil's just got a hook in your nose and he's dragging you off the hellfire. You don't have to put no earrings in your nose, you already got a hook in your nose. The devil's got a hook in your nose. And he's dragging you down the hell, center. Pull that hook out of your nose. Get that hook out of your nose, center. The devil's going to drag you down the hellfire with that hook in your nose. You don't have to follow the devil. You don't have to follow the traditions of men. You don't have to be a goose-stepping robot. Be original and get your King James Holy Bible out and read it, this, this Christ man. Do something original for, the, for a change. That's not the Biblia. Lay on the Biblia. Nosotros necesitamos más de la Biblia en este mundo. Y menos del diablo. Y menos de la iglesia católica. Y menos de la papa en Roma. Uh, look at what sin does to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. It is old guy cruising, playing Guns and Roses. Yeah, how about that? He still ain't got war out with it. He's been wallowing in it for 30 or 40 years and still ain't got tired of it. How long does it take to learn a lesson? Yeah. Go on, no. 
nowhere, but the hell. Right. Going nowhere. You're on a journey Set. somewhere tonight. Senator, you're on a journey somewhere tonight. You're headed somewhere. The end of your road is coming up. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way you're on tonight that seems right unto you. You are taught that way from your youth up, just like all the pagans in ancient pagan Rome. There is millions of pagans in the Roman Empire, all the way from England to the Middle East, down to North Africa, all the way up to Southern Germany. And all of them pagans, their mother and their father taught them the pagan ways, just like your mother and your father taught you them pagan ways, and erecting that pagan bell tree and putting them pagan presents under that pagan bell tree, and following all them pagan traditions and putting them pagan lights up and all the rest of that paganism. And your mother and father taught you that from your youth up, and you think it's right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of the ways of death. But you're on a pathway, pagans. You little pagans, you're on a pathway that leads to death, and you're going to suffer two deaths. Two deaths. If you don't get born again, the Bible way. If you don't get regenerated, the Bible way, you're going to suffer two deaths. You're going to right. die twice. That's right. I bet you didn't know you was going to die twice. I bet you thought you was just going to die once. You're going to die twice. The Bible says, and whosoever, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now guess what the Bible calls that being cast into the lake of fire? This is the second death. This is the second death. You're headed for two deaths. You better get born again before it's too late. The old King James Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You're the walking dead tonight, pagans. Read the Bible and come alive in Christ before it's too late. Before it's too late.